All right, I just wanted to talk a little bit about attribute grammars. So the notion is that, you know, we started off with regular expressions for our tokenizing, and then we went to context-free grammars for our parsing, and then we decided, well, the context-free grammars still don't capture context-sensitive information, so what's the next logical extension? And the idea is to use attribute grammars, where, again, this is effectively context-free grammars plus, where we decide that for every token and for every non-terminal in our grammar, we're going to allow them to have an extra set of attributes, things like their data type. And then for every rule in our grammar, for every case where we've got a, you know, terminal goes to whatever, what we'll do is add an additional set of attribute rules that tell you what are the valid attributes for the tokens on the right hand side of that rule and what combinations are acceptable and given those how do we compute the resulting attributes for the non-terminal on the left so given you know x times y or given expression goes to x times y Given the current attributes for x times and y, what should the resulting attri attributes for our new variable be? All right, so the attribute grammars are just looking at a way to try and formally express that. Now, I'm going to talk about inherited attributes versus synthesized attributes. So the inherited attributes are, if we're looking at the parse tree, then the inherited attributes are the ones that are determined top-down, the ones that are imposed by the structure of what we've got. On the other hand, the synthesized attributes are the ones that we determine from the bottom up. Once we've got that list of tokens down at the bottom and we're working our way up the parse tree saying, okay, well, this is an expression that's, you know, a real multiplied by an int. And, you know, we continue working our way up the tree as, we were def as we're coming up with the actual data types and things for the expressions as we evaluate them. These are the synthesized attributes, the things that we determine bottom up once we know which tokens form which, ex which pieces of our expression or which pieces of our purse tree. So we've got this set of rules that are applied both on the way down and the way up the purse tree. Right, where we're going through and saying, okay, well, you know, the, the uh, I've got this non-terminal that's composed of these things, and you go off and parse the rest of it and come back and say, okay, well, based on our parsing of that, what have I got? What are the pieces that I've got? How do I update my attribute rules for the non-terminal at the top of this? And then, you know, how does that impact things going on up top? Perhaps the most natural method of deciding when you're going to actually apply all those rules to, is to say, well, I've got this non-terminal and I've got all these things fanning out in the parse tree below it. What I'll do is go off and figure all of those out, right? figure out all the children, and once all the children have all their values set, once all their attribute values are set, then I'll figure out the results for my current non-terminal. So this is the idea of a dynamic method, where you go off and do all the, the children first and then update the parent. It doesn't have to be that way, though. You could come up with a, a more structured rule-based approach where you say, well, if I go through the f second child and figure out this one attribute for that second child, I can then go through and figure out this other attribute for the fifth child, and once I've got those two things, I can set this attribute for the parent, and then I'll go off and compute these attributes. So you can go through and come up with a, a kind of structural approach where you say, this is the sequence we're going to figure everything out in, and go do it that way. In which case, you know, who knows, it could mean that you're, you're parsing pieces of your tree multiple times for different things, but depending on what you're trying to achieve, maybe that's a reasonable approach. So we can have these sort of dynamic versus rule-based approaches. And again, uh, it, which one you use is going to be based on what you're trying to achieve and what actual rule structure you've got. Now, if we're thinking of this in the same way as we did with our scanners 
and our parsers where we thought, well, it'd be really nice if we had a tool where we fed in the attribute grammar and it spit out the compiler that had all of this stuff encoded in it nicely. So as a as the compiler writer, I never actually have to, to do anything except create the, the my regular expressions, my context-free grammar, and then throw in my attribute rules and everything should be fine from there. I just push a button and let it go. The problem is that these rules can become very complex and can can wind up being very slow and wind up taking a lot of memory space in a complex parse tree. You know, if we've got complex data types to work with and we're doing dealing with things like structural equivalents where you've got these big complicated data types for A, B, and C, <clears throat> and you're having to go off and do type checking on each of these things in fair detail, then those things get you know, pass down the tree and maybe there's a layer of type checking that's taking place on them again down below. There, things can be fairly complex and can grow in complexity quite quickly in most automated general purpose systems. Uh, if you've got a system where, you know, you're trying to support things like declare anywhere and you're making multiple passes through the system where you've got forward declarations that you're going where once you finally see the declaration you're linking back to wherever the uh, it was used and trying to fill in the pieces there then you can start running into fairly complex issues with cross-referencing back and forth across these attribute rules in different portions of your parse tree so again the complexity can get quite nasty You also have to worry about the possibility of cyclic or cycles in your rules and your attribute grammar rules, especially if we start getting into the ideas of uh, the the, the rule-based sequencing for evaluating our attribute rules, where I'm saying, well, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this, and these are going to use pieces from this one and from that one and from this one. Then there really is a possibility of creating some kind of a cycle where to figure out the attribute for or the value for this particular attribute you have to go down and figure out that one and that one has to go off and figure out this one and this one has to figure out the one that we're trying to figure out now and you wind up with this cycle which either means you've got to take care to avoid having these cycles in your attribute get grammars or you need some kind of system for saying well if I hit a cycle like this this is how I'm gonna break it and this is how I'm going to decide on values so they are very complex systems to try and put together Plus, you've got the fact that while you're doing this, while you're going off and computing your parse tree and then computing the attribute values based on that, you are implicitly at least building and storing chunks of your parse tree, at least enough of it to have all of the different pieces of attribute information you're going to need to work off of right now. And again, you can wind up with fairly complex storage problems here and fairly large amounts of storage involved in this. So again, these are all pretty substantial challenges to coming up with an automated system for doing this. And well, as you've probably noticed, with Lex, it went off and did this nice little job of generating our tokens for us. And Yak did a great job of taking our context-free grammar rules and uh, checking to make sure that things were syntactically, structurally valid. But that's where they left it. If you want to do context-sensitive checking, you have to throw in your own collections of C rules to, or C++ rules or whatever it might be to associate with each of those different context-free grammar rules and with each of those tokens to carry out the necessary context sensitive checking. So that is being left to the developer to figure out. And again, the idea is it's very challenging to come up with an effective attribute grammar and a compiler generator that can efficiently read that grammar and generate a compiler based on it. All right, so this, this kind of antler, bison, yak approach is pretty common where even if you've got an automated tool for the scanning and the parsing, it's much less common to have automation for the 
context sensitive side of things. So the uh, the practice that we're doing with Yak right now in uh, labs two, three, and four is great practice for when we go through and start putting our context sensitive checking into our handcrafted compilers. But I think I will leave it there for now and later we will come back and start looking at the intermediate phases for code generation. Once we've done our checking and once we've got all these different uh, pieces of information stored for the components of our program, how do we go about taking that and translating that into whatever our target language is and performing all the different optimizations and things we want to do once we get there. So that's where we will head next.